Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and I started a collaboration with Temu and I received two devices from them and that's the first one and uh, this is a very simple and then cheap uh, one gang uh, Zigbee switch and the main reason I ordered this because I wanted to see if you know what is a sort of like a basic switch that if I need a, like a for a simple function where I don't need a lot of extra features I don't need energy management then I can just buy but since it is mains powered I want to make sure that it works as a router so at least I can also use this to extend my uh, Zigbee mesh network and it sort of does all these things because when I was testing in the TUI application where it is marketed for of course it works it has all the features it has uh, uh, you know all the schedules and timers and everything and you can set this device whether the switch which is, you can see what is connected here in the S1 and the S2 is a toggle switch or a momentary switch and then it was working in iHost as well um, you know just the basic features but it was working great it wasn't working in the EV link uh, um, I couldn't link it to an NS Panel Pro but that's fine uh, this is how I sort of expected the NS Panel Panel Pro to work anyway and when I uh, linked it to my Zigbee to MKTT it was working fine as well the only difference is I was not able to set the switch type in Zigbee to MQTT even though I was able to do it in Tuya so if you want to do your homebrew network with Zigbee to MQTT or home assistant that's probably a function that you won't find or at least not now maybe it's going to be added in the future but regardless it is a root device and um, I think it is a fairly competitive price un until I find something cheaper. So if you are interested in this device, then you can go down to my video description and you're going to find all sorts of links, how you can sign up with Timu and how you can download the app. And when you register as a new user, you also get an initial bonus of uh, 100 euros that you can spend on new devices. So you definitely be able to buy quite a few of these. Let me just quickly sw uh, switch to the listing so I can show you. Uh, as you can see, it is marketed with the Tuya and it is Zigbee compatible. And at the moment it is sold for, for 10, 30 euros. And um, I mean, I don't want to go through the, you know, the listing because it contains most of the generic things like, you know, how you can use it with uh, Amazon Alexa or Google Home. Of course, that just basically, well, you can link it, you can use it with Amazon directly for Google Home. You just link the two application to your Google Home account and you can just voice control every single device. But um, yeah, the other thing is it is, well, it is advertised as a 16 amp relay. Probably I'm going to use 16 amp. Uh, full 16 amps on this it is a fairly small guy and um, and yeah I mean you see the uh, you know the generic pictures of app control and voice control and everything and how you can set up counters and timers and cycles which is you know it's all true it's all the basic function that, that you get with these devices I didn't want to do uh, uh, sort of like an unboxing because that's the unboxing so it comes in a box uh, most of this stuff is taped over with these uh, Timu stickers. Uh, not that there is a lot uh, that needs to be said about this. There is a separate documentation. Uh, I think it's like an, you know, compliance document probably that is required to be sold in the EU. And other than that, it has a very generic documentation and it is only in two languages. So one side is English and the other side is German, at least the version that I got. Probably the only thing I would highlight is the connection diagram, which is again, fairly easy. You see that in the middle you have live in and neutral in. So that's where you contain, connect the mains. And then the, from the left, the first and the fourth pin is the neutral out and the live out. So that's how you connect your lamp. And then you connect the switch to S1 and the S2. Probably the only interesting thing about this device is that um, you can see it on the front as well that it says that it works with oops too much 100 to 240 volts AC and also 15 to 250 volt DC. So if you have um, like an off-grid home or an RV and you still want a smart home, then you can use this as long as you have a 24 volt system and not a 12 volt system because it says it only starts from 15 volts but um that's that's actually a good idea i mean i guess you can buy a lot of uh, these of i mean definitely you can, you can buy leds that are uh, work on 24 volts led strips quite easily 
probably down lights as well. I haven't seen too much, to be honest. And then probably some appliances that work on 24 volts. And you would be able to control them. And you create a nice, you know, sort of like a cozy smart home Zigbee system and off-grid on or running on DC with these devices. So not any of my other products support this DC voltage. So that's definitely a first for me. And I think that should be enough for the introduction as well. As I said in this video, I'm going to test this device in the Tuya. Well, that's the advertised app. And then I tried to use it in NS Panel Pro and the EVLink application. That didn't work. So I switched over to the iHost and it was working in iHost. And then finally, I also tested with Zigbee to MQTT and it was working with that as well. Um, with the only caveat that I that already mentioned. So it is working great. Everything is, you know, fine. And I'm just quite happy how it works. And again, it's, it's a, it is a cheap device if you don't need any other functions. Or maybe you can just wire the mains and neutral and then just use it as a router and then it extends your network for that fun you know for that feature you don't need any additional you know special functions so this guy might just do the thing so this device is um, advertised as a tuya device so i think we should ta ta try with tuya first so i have in my tuya app oh by the way this guy is now plugged in so you can see that it works okay so let me just pick my um, Blitzwolf IS1. That's what I'm going to use for a sub device. And um, um, let's just say that the LED is already blinking, although I don't really see where the LED is on this device. So maybe what I'm going to do is just going to press. Oh, oh, it's already here. Okay. No need to worry. Okay, that's done. And I'm going to rename it. Um, small Zigbee. Done. Okay, let's see how it works. Okay, I don't need that. I long press to change the switch name and I can turn it on and off. Yeah, I haven't seen this UI before, but um, yeah, looks fine. So yeah, works, response is quick and I can create timers here. So I can create, you know, daily schedules when the device should be turned on and off. And I can create loads of these. I can create countdowns. So let's say, you know, like sleep timers. I can cre create circle schedules when uh, things should, you know, work on an on-off cycle. I can also do random. So that's good enough if you want to set up something like, you know, turn on randomly for a set amount of time and then it turns off and the inching settings. So yeah, uh, let's say, oops, three seconds enable inching. Okay, let's go to settings and that's pretty much it. Yeah, switch type. Oh, that's good. So I can set it to a button switch if I want to replace this regular rocker switch with a button. So that would work with, you know, when you push the button once and then it uh, uh, flips the output status, you push it once and oops, and then it flips the status again. So this is a really good feature and I'm really happy that even this basic device has this feature because that's that's really useful. So that's that's what you can see in the settings and then you also have a power on state, which is, yeah, you can set it to off, on or remember the last status all the basics, but that, that's pretty much what you need. And I guess we don't really find anything in this main settings. I mean, we can rename the device and uh, change its location, but that should be all. Yeah, I can enable on-fly notification, multi-user control, sorry, multi-control associations if I want to group it with other devices. And uh, yeah, no updates available. Energy instance. I don't think it's going to be applicable here because this doesn't measure power consumption. So it's a simple switch, but it has all the things that you want to control. And that's, that's great. This is how I expected this device to work. So I'm quite happy. So I think it is time that we move over to the next system. So behind the scenes, I try to link this unit into the EV link application as well using my uh, NS Panel Pro, which is 
well, it's just right there. But it just didn't work. It says that one uh, one device is found, but then immediately it says, oh, there is no device. So I'm guessing it is checking that it's not a son of device and it just doesn't allow to connect to it. But let's try with iHost because that might act differently. So if I, wrong screen, sorry. If I want to add a new Zigbee device and I start pairing, I might have to reset this again. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so I was just pressing the button on the back in order to reset it just to make sure that it, I'm not sure if it needed resetting because I was, you know, pairing it with different systems. Oh, okay, so this is here. So that's the name. And again, I'm just going, going to call it Mini Zigbee, not Zigbee Mini, and quit. And if I go back to home, uh, I mean all devices. Oh, I have a new one and it says it is a router. Okay, so you can see this icon here which says uh, Zigbee to cube and um, yeah, so that's because I have enabled uh, the this experimental feature uh, Zigbee to cube. So that is responsible for the well, that makes the iHost to recognize non son of branded Zigbee products as well, as you can see. Although this one is, you know, just like a Zigbee Mini or the Zigbee Mini Extreme, I don't think it has different, you know, clusters and capabilities, but still it is, it, otherwise it wouldn't be recognized. So just make sure that this pilot feature is enabled. But with this, I can access it. And as you can see, oh, you can't. Uh, let me change the view, uh, one second. So now you can see how I can, oh, wrong screen, of course. So you see, I can turn it on and off. So it absolutely works and that's great. So, and I can do the usual thing. So it, I mean, it has a different icon, I'm guessing because of, um, yeah. So, you know, like a, a Zigbee, Mini would probably come up with its own icon or just a, a generic switch icon, but they have another, you know, custom icon here, which is good. And I can see that I can also do some, you know, other custom icons. Wonderful. And again, I have all access to all the features that uh, another Zigbee one. So I can create schedules and I uh, always press on the wrong button. And I can also create a delay, uh, like a sleep timer and also create this loop timer. So there were a couple of additional functions in the TUI application, but that's what sort of iHost uh, supports by standard. And if I go to the settings, there is not an awful lot here. So you can see there is a version, there is, I can assign it to location. I can create new scenes, view the records, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And also in the scenes, I can create a scene where let's say if smart device uh, da, 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 mini zigbee and it supports the switch state so i can create a scene if this device got turned on or turned off and of course i can also use this device on the action side so smart devices and mini zigbee and switch and i can turn it on and off or reverse it so basic features, but that's that's pretty much what we expect. So the only thing I can't really set here is what switch type it uses. So I don't have access to those settings that we have seen in the two app. Um, yeah, so I think you probably uh, stuck with the standard switch, but um, yeah, that's uh, maybe in a future versions because even some of the Sonoff products support that switch type that would be brought over into iHost as well, and then it's going to be available. Yeah, and it's a router device, but I think I mentioned that before. So it works as a router, just what we expect, and it delivers the basic functionality on the iHost. So if you need a cheap alternative, yeah, you can use it in the Sonoff ecosystem as long as you are using iHost. And finally, it is time to move over to Zigbee to MQTT. So I'm going to delete the device from here, and I'm going to switch to my Zigbee to MQTT, uh, screen and also I'm going to enable pairing okay so permit join 
and we just wait for the new device to show up which oh it's happening oh, it's already done so it is called the tuya ts001 so i guess that's a fairly generic uh, model um yeah one gang switch power on behavior link quality okay so it looks like that the very same one also um sort of like send and rebranded in these ones and this one is just a generic um yeah generic branded on on branded product okay let's see what it does so it is a router that's nice to see and uh, everything is supported and it mains powered and the interview is completed and okay let's see what it exposes oh that's a little bit disappointing to be honest because uh, we are seeing even less uh, functionality here what we see on the uh, on some of the other products that i had in mind so the state is on and off and uh, so obviously i can turn this now it's off and I, it's on, it works perfectly. I can specify the power on behavior as well. And it then only does link quality. It doesn't really do anything else. So again, when I did the intro and I said that I'm looking for these generic devices that basically just have, I don't want to make sure that they are routers so I can just throw them in somewhere if I want to extend my NASH network. So they definitely do that and they are recognized as routers in every single system. And I also want to change the switch state, uh, sorry, the switch mode, which I could do in I, um, the TUI application. And I was pretty much expecting here as well. And the reason I said that, because I have this uh, device here, which is also like, um, I bought it as a TUI branded. As you can see, it is a slightly different version because it's a WHD02. If I go into this, I mean, it looks like, just another generic package you know very similar to this one it has the same connection everything is the same so i did expect that it would have the same functionality but if i look at what uh, functions it exposes okay it has a countdown as well which i'm not really interested in but there uh, you can see that I, it has a switch type so i could um, change this uh, from the basic uh, toggle to the momentary because for this particular application i wanted a push button instead of a switch um, but for our devices, it's not available. It's a little bit bummer, but still, if you don't need that function, if you want to use it for a normal rock or switch, I think this is uh, good enough because it has all the other features that you would expect. So I think that concludes my review of uh, this uh, one gang Zigbee switch. If you are interested in this device, I'm going to leave all sorts of links and discount codes and everything that I received from Temu in the video description. So definitely check it out and uh, just make sure that you also include my code. So at least they see if uh, you manage to get this product through me, not just a generic customer. But as I said, that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.